be able to reach the multitudes if we stick to the same groups every year. And here's the, here's the thing. Um, Pastor, he always taught, taught us this in the team meetings. And this is no bash on small churches. But if a church is making disciples, do you think it's going to stay small? Mm -mm. And I just heard this quote today. I want to say it for you. A church or a leader that focuses on having church, I'm going to butcher it, will rarely make disciples. A church that focuses on having church will rarely make disciples. But a church that focuses on making disciples will get the church. We got it backwards. Christianity in America has it backwards. If you have church, we'll make disciples. Nope. You'll make church attenders. But if we have people, okay, that will make disciples, you will form a church, a powerful church. And I'll explain that real quick so we can start wrapping this up to the next phase here, okay? If someone comes in like a Peyton, and all he knows is you come in and you, you walk into a building and you say hi to a few people, you get a coffee, and then you sit down and then you stand up to sing, and then you sit down again, right? And then you hear um, Dorothy share and Sam and others share announcements. And then you have Pastor Ryan talk. What would he learn to replicate or duplicate if he left the building? What would he learn? To hold a church service. Right? Did Jesus replicate that? And I know this is sounding like anti-church right now. And remember, church services are powerful. It's a training ground for us. Calvary looks at it as a training ground. Okay? Equipping and reaching. We reach people, as you can see. As you can see from the stories. But it's not the end game, is it, at Calvary? It's not the end game. Listen, if Payton came into church, he would learn how to hold a church service. Am I right or am I wrong? But if I invite Peyton into my house to show him grace and someone hug him, which was awkward, but awesome, because he needed, he was depleted of connection, weren't you? He needed affection. He needed, um, he needed companionship and com camaraderie and, and all those things and connection, right? So, but he now knows how to sit down and read the Bible and pray with people and how to help people over his house. He knows more than just Sunday morning. We've given him both. Isn't that awesome? He knows how to open up his Bible and look for a scripture. He knows how to care for someone. Someone in our group had a major surgery. He watched us care for her and get her a gift basket. He watched how to take care of other kids so that you can get R&R. &R. You see what he got to experience? We need to multiply that and do Sunday mornings well. Amen? And again, there's only one of me and some staff, but all of us together, wow, can you imagine the reach we're going to have? So that's why you're here tonight, I hope to learn and hear and, and be inspired by this, that we can reach the lost or even connect the church person who's not even connected and lonely. That's a big burden of mine. Or just doesn't have anyone to help them grow. A lot of people are going to come in on this path of your group at different stages. Some of them are already growing, but they're not being taught how to go and make disciples. I have a group right now where I am trying to help them go and make disciples. I've taken them in on the grow and power stage, part of the journey. The reason why my group with those three and the other parents was so simple in the beginning is because I didn't know them and I had no idea where they were spiritually. 
So I wasn't going to jump into the study of the book of Romans because I didn't want to scare them away, you know. Let's do Revelation chapter 1. No. All right, so you're here tonight, and maybe you've been leading, and you need a reminder of this, and maybe you are brand new, and you need a reminder, or you need to know this. Here is the commitment. I like to put this right up front. Okay, here is what to expect. Here's the commitment. And I'm going to give you the basics, okay? Because maybe you're saying, I am interested. I'm ready to do this. Or maybe I'm kind of curious still what it takes. Here's the basics. Uh, first of all, 3 to 12 members is a group. Meeting weekly to bi-weekly, okay? I recommend at least bi-weekly or weekly. When we do once a month, unless you're a fellowship group, and many groups can function really well when they're a fellowship group like that, but when you are trying to make disciples, you need to meet regularly. They need consistency, okay? And oftentimes, when you don't meet regularly, um, people check out and don't come back, okay? It has to become a part of a rhythm of their life, a rhythm of their life, all right? One to two hours per group meeting. Now, some groups, if they're fellowship-oriented a lot, and like my home group with all the kids, <laughs> Christina's laughing, um, We've been like 6.30 to 10.30, all right, because we're just having a lot of fun, all right? We'll do our Bible study, we'll pray, we'll eat, we'll play gestures or gestures, we'll play um, catchphrase, we'll play a game, and it's just a lot of fun. And we do it every other week, every other Friday, okay? I'm looking forward to one coming up here. And it's preferably in a home or a convenient location, all right? Some of you, you have to come to the church because you live out in the sticks and you want to host here in the church, I get that. And no one wants to drive 45 minutes to Marydale. No, I'm just joking. We have a group out there. They're doing good. And uh, one to two year commitment before you multiply. Now, if your group is like everyone's mature, everyone's empowered, ready to rock, then go ahead and start multiplying in the first year. But we want one to two year commitment together where you really grow them. You really know where they are, grow them. And then and by the way, not everyone that gets empowered and goes and starts their own groups or starts making disciples, you will have some who need to stick around, okay? You need to have some. The hardest part, by the way, in this ministry is, is multiplication because guess what you have to do? You have to split up these awesome connections. But here's what I recommend for those of you who do that. Grab dinner after church every once in a while with your old group and just check on them, see how they're doing. And by the way, you want to coach. Uh, when you multiply, you become that person's coach. So when, uh, let's say, Peyton goes and starts a group, guess who is his coach? Me. He's going to call me and go, okay, Ryan, um, someone asked if they could bring their dog to my group. What do I do? Okay. I'll help you out with that, Peyton. You're going to want to get some dog food. You're going to want, no, sure. All right, types of groups, discipleship groups, and interest groups. Let me explain these. Discipleship, purpose of helping unbelievers or new believers and maturing believers to become disciple makers. Um, I personally like an end game or a goal to shoot for. Otherwise, the group will go for 10 years and never end. And you'll be all mature and you'll be really strong, but we want an end game. And that end game is to go, deploy them. And so that's the purpose of discipleship. You often will find discipleship groups are Bible study groups, new believer groups, prayer groups. This is cool, sermon-based groups. I recommend this for first-time group leaders. Take our sermon from Sunday. Take the after-the-sermon discussion guide we put on our website. Use that whenever your group is after that Sunday to talk about the sermon. That kind of gets your group members to watch the sermon too. It's kind of a neat idea. And then evangelistic groups. And then the focus is to grow and empower the members of these groups to go out and reach the lost or to make their own groups. So that's a discipleship group. Go to interest group. Interest group is another form of discipleship because it's part of the discipleship path for people's lives. And uh, you can go to that next slide for me. Um, purpose of ministering to a believer for a season on a specialized topic or personal life matters. Focuses on emotional healing, marriage, finances, addictions, grief, personality training, faith at work, 
jobs for life. We have those kind of groups that we can have, um, et cetera. They include family fellowship groups for kids, youth, families, and all ages. Now, don't get me wrong. These groups tend to blend because you may have a discipleship group where your group focuses on marriages. Awesome. Do it. Okay, because marriage is just as important as anything else you're learning for following Jesus and making disciples. It's part of the journey. So there's a blend there. And even like our, our, our uh, youth groups right now, they're meeting right now in different homes. Uh, t- or right now, tonight, they're actually at this, the community center for the one night thing. But they'll go out into the different host homes, which we mentioned earlier. Um, their goal is to make disciples too, but they're at a specific age. So we, we just kind of classify them as an interest group for, for that sake. But we need both kind of groups. And this is just to help us organize so we know who we're talking to when we're doing training or helping people. So just, to, just you know, that's the commitment is you're kind of choosing one of those kind of groups. You know, am I doing a Bible study to help people grow spiritually? Well, you're probably a discipleship group. Am I doing a group on grief share or marriage or finances? You're probably an interest group. And I look at it this way. You get someone in your group and you find out that they have financial struggles and they need help with that, you discreetly and carefully say, hey, on Thursday night, we're, we meet on Friday, but on Thursday night, there's a Financial Peace University group. Why don't you jump into that at the same time if you have the, you know, the time to help you with that situation? See what, see what I mean? So you have that opportunity to do that. And then you can go to the next slide as well. Here's our requirements for group leaders. We, we need to know that you're not Team Calvary, but we have to kind of know you're part of Calvary, <laughs> right? We're not saying, let's raise the banner of Calvary, but we've had people try to start groups and be advertised through Calvary, and they don't even attend Calvary, and I have no idea who they are. And that's a little sketchy because I don't know if they're going to represent Jesus well or Calvary well. So we require that you go through next steps or maybe you were part of Vision of Calvary years ago with my dad and you need to become partners of Calvary. It's four weeks, not hard to do. That you're in unity with Calvary's leadership and vision. Uh, I haven't heard this yet, but there's nothing worse for pastors I've heard in other churches where the uh, community group or small group turns into a cult or turns into bash the senior pastor group and then take all them and start their own church. That happens. I wouldn't want that to happen. One, I don't think there's anything for me, I don't think I've done anything wrong to make someone feel that way about me, but I wouldn't want to hurt the testimony of Jesus Christ or show disunity to those people in that group in the body of Christ. So it's important that you're, you agree and you are part of Calvary to lead a group. And then lastly, you fulfill our group leader application and process. So you would fill out application and then you would talk to me and we would start developing your group. And, um, and also the next step, and I'm offering this, for those of you who are ready, even those of you who want more training, I'm offering for the next two Wednesday nights online training through Zoom, okay, where we, you could stay in the comfort of your home. Thank you for coming out tonight, by the way. I was really happy with this show, with this, with this attendance. Thank you. Thank you for making a drive out. Um, but I'm going to, for convenience sake, do online training for the next two Wednesday nights. Um, or until we need to finish to help you learn how to lead community, okay? How to be a leader of community. And I want to answer questions you have, all that. And we can even help develop your group if we need to. So that would be the next step after tonight. And um, group leaders who are current group leaders, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. You are doing an amazing job, and I'm blown away. And I, I, I want to, I forgot about one more person. I was going to have my mom come up. And are you still cool with that? Come on up. I want to give you example. I meant to do this earlier. I just realized. I am so sorry. 
I was going to say, man, why am I like done early? This is awesome. I'm never done early. People are like, yeah, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> um, my dad just actually said that. No, sure. Um, what does our typical group look like? I think that's a big question people have. My mom tried something different this year, and I thought, man, she needs to share this. Um, and then I need Diane and Gloria to come up real quick, too, to share why you nominated so many women to start a group, okay? So um, real quick, tell us, tell us what you did, if you can, briefly, okay. the kind of group you did. It was experimental, right. and I thought, wow, how simple but how powerful it was. Yeah, I've done support groups before and, and Bible study groups and even used a book. Um, but this time, um, or even created my own curriculum. But this time I just used a sermon. We started with Faith Over Fear. And it was, um, it was resounding with my group uh, that I had at the time. So uh, when we finished we, uh, with what we were doing, we were doing a thing on fear, actually. <laughs> A book on it. And so we started, you know, and so I took, I always listen to his sermons and I'm always taking notes anyway, but I would actually listen again. You don't have to do that, but that's who I am and take good notes. So I knew I had the main points and where do I put those scriptures in? Cause even on his outline say the main scripture and then other scriptures. And, um, um, I would mail my people, um, you know, the link to those questions, the discussion question, or I would just copy it and paste it and email it to them. And um, I also have an assistant in Kim Murtha. So we met ahead of time and sort of planned, how are we going to do this? So we called it Iron Sharpens Iron uh, so that it's just us helping one another, sharpening one another according to what we get from the sermon. We answer those questions. And uh, First, where everyone comes in, we have um, coffee. Anyone can bring something to share. Sometimes I have stuff. Sometimes we have more than enough stuff. You know, and we visit for a little while. We may share testimonies. We may have prayer together just over what was brought up at that point. And, uh, and then we go into, you know, the questions from the discussion. And sometimes we don't even get to all the questions, you know, because they're getting into it so much and what they got from it and, and discussing, or it goes off into a need. And I like what Pastor Ryan says, we're not teaching curriculum, we're connecting and we're helping to them to find a place in the Bible to help them with where they are. And so sometimes that's what would happen. And um, I, we just really enjoyed that a lot. And what about that one group you did where they had to read the Bible and then come in and share? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was, like, really simple and cool, too. I like well, that. Well, yeah, we were, we were doing that, too, and that was real interesting. <laughs> I learned a lot. I really learned. You learn a lot about where people are. I'm sorry. I didn't know that's the one you meant. It's okay. Yeah. We started with that, and uh, I could really tell where they needed help from that. That was, that was very interesting. So... Uh, basically, it's uh, you come with what you got from what you read in the Word this week. And, you know, I and uh, uh, Kim Murtha did it the first week. I think I did one where we shared what God had given us and everything, and it, we shared songs. They'd bring songs that they had listened to during the week or administered to them, and we'd all listen to them. If they gave them to me ahead of time, I'd print out the words so we could sing along. Um, and uh, we, so, gave, we shared testimonies, yeah, so uh, we, life testimonies. So we really got to know one another. So yeah. essentially, you read the Bible and just share whatever God gave you. Right. They read the Bible, share whatever God was giving them. Yeah, right. And you would, she would call me and tell me, you won't believe it, yeah. that we were all like on the same, mm -hmm. on the same wavelength of different, like God was giving them the same things. Right. Yeah. And then there would be a huge need in the group and someone would be like, well, that's, that was the scripture I got this week. Here it is. <laughs> so they were edifying each other mm -hmm. because in other words, God was using their personal Bible time mm -hmm. and you, it, because of that, you inspired them to be in their Bible. Right. And that, that was the goal is yeah. to inspire them to read the Bible. And I have to, I have to share this yeah. because the Lord brought it back to my mind tonight and um, even before I came here, he brought one thing back, but this in particular. Nine, uh, in 1992, I went to a, a Christian 
a retreat that someone really wanted me to go to. And um, I had resisted, but I went. And um, they broke us down into small groups. And I think there was like seven or eight in each group. And besides the leader of my group, I was the only one with a Bible. And so we were there from Friday night till Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon. I got such a burden because I was rubbing shoulders with people from other churches who sadly didn't know the word of God. They didn't know the basics. Hmm. And my heart was broken for them. And the heart of, God showed me his heart for discipleship that weekend. I, uh, they didn't know God. They really didn't know God, and they didn't know where to go in the Word. And what they were being taught, it was like they almost couldn't relate to. And it was the saddest thing I'd ever seen. And what God showed me was, Angela, you are so rich in this. Mm. And you are so rich in this. Every single one of you. You know the Word, like people in this community do not know the Word, even in other churches. And the burden was help people to want to know me through knowing the word. Yep. And so that's where the discipleship burden came from for me. And that's why in this church, part of the reason besides Pastor Kuhn being strong on teaching, that we were so strong on teaching, making sure there was good, strong teaching in the church of the word of God. And we started training for doing discipleship groups. But, um, the other thing that happened was I was so heartbroken by Sunday morning after breakfast as I interacted with these people, and one was a pastor's wife, and it was just so heartbreaking what she didn't know and what she would, the ignorance she was passing on to people she was teaching that my heart, I, I, there aren't words to explain how I felt except I, I knew I couldn't stay among the people. I was ready to overflow with <laughs> just crying out to God. And so I went to the chapel to pray and the Holy Spirit just took over. And I cried from, I don't know if you've ever cried from way down here and you can't control it, but you know, it was, it was, I've never experienced anything like it before or since. But all I know is as I was praying, it was all in tongues. So I don't know. I know there was another lady listening. I think she thought I was having a breakdown, <laughs> but God showed me a vision of like an, tsunami of evil that was coming and that we had to get ready and I remember there was a scripture that goes something like this if the if the horseman fell what will the watchman do or the walk you know the footman do and it's like God was impressing upon me you gotta know the word you gotta know the word and so now you know, out of that came that 2020 because this pastor and I shared this, this burden for people knowing the word. And lo and behold, I really believe the vision was for 2020. Wow. <laughs> that we were having to be braced in the word of God. We have got to share what we know. We got to yeah. share our lives and share what we know and not be stingy because people are in the balance and we hold them in the balance. We have the words of life. We have the connection with God. So you talk about small groups being connecting. It's not just with one another, we're connecting them. We're connecting them with God, who that's, is their hope and their everything. source and everything they need, that's their everything. life. Yeah. So that's, that's how important it is. So don't <clears throat> worry about how good you are at this. Just let God do it, Yeah. really. And. There are times I went away from the group and it was like, wow, God, that, wow, God, <laughs> you're yeah. amazing. The way he did it through these people, they were sharing with one another. They were teaching yeah. one another. They were being open and supportive and ministering to one another. So create that kind of atmosphere and, yeah. you know, they feel a responsibility to do it. I'll tell you, half the time my group was connecting so much, I was just standing back watching them connect. Mm -hmm. You know, after a while, I didn't have to, I just had to foster it. I just had to provide an atmosphere for it. Right. But then they were caring for each other. Right. You know, but so true about connecting with God. Right. Because isn't that the end game too? Yeah. Is that we know God. And to go along with what you're saying, Colossians 2, when I read that verse 6 and 7 about let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Do you know what the next paragraph is? 
Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies. Mm -hmm. The burden you got was that you were in this retreat and they didn't know the word. Mm -hmm. So who knows how many false teachings and philosophies are going to fall for because they didn't know the one true word of God. That's why the grow step of disciple making is just and, so important. And one of the, the main phrases, I'll never forget it, that came out of that was, be a friend, make a friend, lead a friend to Christ. I've never forgotten it. That's good. And that's what he's calling us to do. Just be a friend, show up and be a friend. Okay? Well, I'll give you one instead okay. to help us. Oh, that was a great one. But I got one I used, so now you're, now you're interfering with it. Okay. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. It's, no, I, I should use it more often. Get together, grow together, and then go together. If you could sum up the discipleship journey. Thank you, Amber, for cleaning that. Sorry, Mom, but we have to clean it because people are watching. Um, get together, grow together, and then go together. If you simply get together, growing is going to happen, especially if you're growing spiritually in your own personal walk. You're going to inspire other people to grow, and then you go together. Real quick, uh, Okay, like five minutes. I'm sorry, ladies. Gloria, Diane, future group coaches here because they just accidentally elevated themselves to group coaches because I asked them to nominate and refer anyone in their group to come tonight to, to learn how to be a group leader. They sent me the longest list. Like for each of their group, I was like, good grief. It was like eight and 12 women you guys both referred to. So come on over real quick. Why in the world would you um, want these women to do this? What, what made you nominate them? Was it because they're perfect? Was that it? Were they perfect women for a group? Like, are they perfect? They never mess up. Why, why did you get they them They were to hungry. It? They were hungry. They were really hungry. And whenever we would have classes, I mean, you could just see just such An appetite. stuff come out of them. Mm -hmm. And just, I knew I had to take it slow. <laughs> but just seeing how God was using them, and, and just like what uh, Angela was saying, you know, just we, we come together, we fellowship, we, we worship um, encourage each other pray for each other and just to see the strength in them and i said they don't know what they have yet i said yeah. but little by little you know you know god would have them to come forth to speak to give words that was in in their heart and just seeing where god had it and i said they need to come yeah they need to come and your group is the kingdom woman, kingdom women kingdom women group mm -hmm. and it's just grown so much yeah. and you guys do book studies or bible studies yeah and we, we actually, we do uh, Bible studies now on Wednesdays and prayer on Thursdays. So Bible study Wednesday, prayer on Thursday. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're breaking trend statistics about people only being in church. They're ready for this? The new statistic, people will go to church three times, three out of eight weeks. Okay? And it's now trending even worse than that. Okay? So... That's not much in a year, okay? You're seeing women coming three times a week. I do have someone from North Carolina that comes every week too. Online? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Having an online, like Zoom and having that? Awesome. Uh, Diane, what about you? Why'd you choose them? Um, when you spend weekly time with each other and you're... <clears throat> um, their appetite for the word and what they share in group insights that God's showing them, you know they're growing spiritually. Um, they'll lead out in prayer. We have a prayer time at the end, and they're the first to volunteer to pray or to close in prayer or whatever. Uh, you just see their spiritual appetite. And then you also learn their giftings mm. because their giftings will be revealed each week as they're attending and uh, <laughs> as you're sharing around the table, individual groups as at their table or collectively, or we have an event that we do together um, and work right. together. You, they'll begin to shine what God has blessed them with, their gifts, their talents, and then you see their 
uh, hunger for the word and their prayer and that they're spiritually growing, yeah. at that point, they're ready to go. Yeah. They might not have it, faith in themselves, but it's, it's there. God's got great things in store for them to use yeah. uh, and to fulfill what his real call, what the end call is for them. Yeah. So. Anything you would encourage them with right now? Because some of them are in the room right now or, or be watching <laughs> Just this. go for it. God's yeah. got great things it. in store for you. You haven't even touched the surface yet. Yep. I have faith in you. Yep. <laughs> awesome. And you know what? You don't have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in the God that lives in you. Yeah, that's right. Okay? I didn't trust in myself to do disciple making and groups and be a pastor. I'm trusting in the God who lives inside of me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I've seen people you would never expect become a disciple maker and leader. So I'm proud of you. Some of you are in this room, glory, you're one of them with trepidation. She started her group and now she's already multiplying two, two and a half years ago from two. Wow. So thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. See, look at that. Generations. Gloria came to wow and to my Bible study. Awesome. And, you know, for a while, a couple different seasons. So, so cool. I, I just want to speak to Lynette because, she, <laughs> because Lynette, I, I did one class. And I said, that's it. I did this class and I'm, I'm through. She comes in my class and she says, oh, don't you think Gloria should do another class? <laughs> so that's how I actually start. Nice. Yeah, see, you see there potential. You that's it. That's it. You're an encourager. Oh, Lynette Williamson is a, an encourager. <laughs> That's awesome. So cool. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. And appreciate everything you've done for the kingdom and through groups. It does not go unnoticed. So that that is the end of our conference. Uh, and really, tonight was just, I'm praying, a jolt of inspiration, confidence that you can do this. And so your next step, if you are, if you are uh, brand new tonight and you've never led a group, uh, we have your information now. I'm going to send you an email of training, but also you can reply to me if you want to start having a conversation with me about your, um, your, maybe your apprehension about starting one, maybe more questions you have. Uh, next Wednesday, though, for anyone, if you're already currently leading the group, I started writing a new training manual for group leadership, and it's called Leading Community. And so you saw a video tonight that just helps like share that, that story of the power of hospitality for that, for that woman to give her life to Christ, for her identity to be reclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ and to be a child of God, all because of, all because of connection and hospitality. And so it's doable, guys, it's doable. And for us, that one ongoing training who already lead, you can join me as well. So I'll shoot out an email of that meeting for next Wednesday. It won't be as long as this conference, so don't worry, okay? Thank you for hanging out for two hours. That was awesome. We only do these now. It looks like we only do this once a year, and we're gonna try to move our training to online um, because you're gonna be spending relationship with people in groups. Just a quick piece of uh, COVID information. Do your groups in person, but also online if you must to keep everyone connected and so they don't feel left out. What would that look like? We have groups right now who literally put a laptop next to them in the group. And that's everyone who's on there virtually, okay? And so they have their Zoom link on or their Google Meet link on and it's, it's on while they're having their Bible study. And so group leaders, I would encourage you to just once in a while ask them if they have any questions, engage them into the conversation. If you're meeting in person, we need to be careful and we, we do need to try to keep our distance right. We need to wear our masks. We need to do all that we're supposed to do to be careful and safe. We do not want to be on the news, okay? We do not want to be on the news for being lazy or whatever may happen. You just never know what could happen, okay? Um, so just want to encourage you to, to do your best to uh, sorry, Peyton, no hugs the next time you come in. So, isn't that messed up? It's messed up. But um, I don't know where you've been, man. So, I don't know. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just joking. So, everyone good? Awesome. Uh, let's, let's stand together and let's pray over this ministry, over your life, 
those who will start a group, those who will be in your groups this year. Um, I'll give you more direction coming up, but here's, man, I am so sorry. There's only so much I can do one night, and that's the downfall of only doing one of these right now. But I was just amazed at how many people came out on a, in the summertime. Um, but here's the thing. If we are going to start launching groups again in September, okay, not the first weekend because that's Labor Day, but after that, you want to start developing your group, okay? What's your vision for the group this year? All right, what are you going to study? What, what kind of group do you want to have? Start formulating that because we'll need to get that on our, on our planning center and our website of your group, okay? Amber is my assistant helping me develop that, and... I am bringing in Larry, who's had many, many years of groups to help me recruit, help me train, help me equip people to get into groups as well. And so he's a, he's a great gem and a gift to us with that um, experience because I'm a lead pastor and I'm learning how much I can handle and how much I'm not supposed to have my hands in. And so I need help. So I'm, I'm, I'm to help out. And uh, I will be contacting some people to be group coaches to help us oversee, <clears throat> Nate Warren, to help us oversee uh, group leaders and uh, <clears throat> uh, Cornelius and others. And uh, yeah, so anyway, we're going to be calling them on uh, to, to help you. So if I'm not available, our group coaches will be available to help answer any questions you have. So let's lift up your members, you and our community up in prayer real quick. So let's pray. God. We thank you for this night. We thank you, Lord, that we could do this two-hour download of your mission about being in community together and loving the lost, loving the body of Christ, being on mission for the sake of the gospel. God, we're, we do this for you, and there is so much um, that we can do and could do together as the body of Christ. I pray tonight that those who are here interested or searching or seeking to lead a group, I pray, Lord, that you would work on their hearts and, and give them the confidence to try it or to at least be a part of an apprenticeship relationship in a group or, or just step out in faith and, and try, God, to or even go to training, Lord. But I pray that there would be uh, the apprehension anxiety would, would shrink and, God, you would increase in their hearts, that you would be with them. And, Lord, give them vision for what they could do. Let them see their value and abilities, Lord, and their worth and what they bring to the kingdom of God, their giftings, God, and use those giftings. Lord, I thank you for our group leaders who have paved the way for so many years in this church. There's even secret groups. There's, there's closed groups that have been together for years, Lord, who have been doing amazing things, leaders who have been changing lives, and we won't even know the, the work that's been done until we get to heaven. We thank you for them. God, strengthen us as leaders tonight. Lord, help us to be ready. Lord, may our personal relationship with you be so strong that you overflow out of our conversations into the lives of people we minister to. Lord, I pray that you would draw in new people, whether they're unreached, unsaved, to disconnected church people in our church or in our community. God, I pray that you would draw them in, bring them into our group. May we have the eyes to also see those people and go after them and get them connected. And, Lord, we pray for all those in our groups right now. Lord, you see what they're going through. You see their personal walk. You see their marriages. You see their, their, um, the conflict that they may be in. You see where they could grow or where they are growing. God, you see the potential of who they can become. God, help us to shepherd them and to love them and to teach them to follow Jesus. God, we thank you for your vision. We thank you for your mission to go and make disciples. And groups is just one avenue to make that happen. And we thank you, Lord, for this amazing community of group leaders and potential and future group leaders in this room. We give you all the glory and praise for what's going to take place because of this moment. In Jesus' name, amen.